Good morning. First Sunday in June, Choir Sunday, lots to celebrate. We're going to do a take two on this. Good morning. There you are. Welcome to Moreland Presbyterian Church. I'm Brian Marsh, the pastor. It's great to see you all here. Uh, great to have those of you who are with us online. And all of us coming together for a morning of celebration. So many reasons to give thanks and to share gratitude with God, with each other. Uh, we are so thankful uh, to celebrate our choir this morning. And part of what you get to celebrate is that you don't have to listen to me. Um, because we are listening to the choir. Yeah. Spoken like a true preacher's kid. Um, our choir is leading us mostly in all aspects of our worship service this morning, proclaiming the message and leading us in prayer and in celebration. And so I'm so thankful to the choir, to Evan Miles, to Tracy Ross, our leaders, and for all of you who are with us here, there, everywhere. Uh, this is a morning to celebrate. And you all will have a part in that too, uh, many parts in that throughout our time. Uh, I just wanted to uh, remind us, whenever we gather, uh, that we not only are here to give thanks to God, to recognize the love of God that gives us life and light, but also to know that this is a space intended for welcome, that this is both a sacred space and a safe space. And so our hope is whether you are newer to Moreland or whether you've been a part of the Moreland family for years, that you will feel free to enter into this space and into this experience in the ways that are most meaningful and memorable for you. We are simply a bunch of ordinary, imperfect people. This is an ordinary, imperfect church. But we are connected together by an extraordinary, imperfect love. And that gives us not only light and life and hope and empowerment, but it gives us a reason to celebrate today. If you are newer to Moreland and you would like to connect more fully with us, if you'd like to receive our weekly e-notes and get to know more about our life together, there are connect cards uh, in the back of each pew in the seats up front here. Feel free to fill one out. You can put it in the offering plate or hand it to me uh, and uh, become more fully connected. We would love to get to know you better and better as well. So now as we are entering into this special Sunday together, we will do that first uh, as our choir invites us into our time.
unto me. Please stand as you are able for our call to worship. In the beauty of your world and wonder of this day, in the signs of grace unfurled in your love that lights our way, in the instruments of spirit you have gifted us to play. We praise you, O God. In the beating of our hearts and with every breath, we say, We praise you, O God. Amen. It's for the beauty of the earth. Number 14, verses 1, 2, and 4. Please be seated. Truly on a day like today and in a season like this, we can look around at the beauty of the earth and the beauty of each other and give thanks to the one who created it all. And we can also look around our world and around our community and our lives and feel like so often it's getting hard to breathe. It's getting hard to believe in anything or anyone at all. With so many challenges, so much conflict, so much distress. As we come to a time of reflection and release, it is an invitation to acknowledge, to recognize the vast breadth and depth of life. And to know that in this space, in this time, we can bring all that connects us, all that we interact with, all that we carry with us in life, and bring it into this space and give thanks for the blessings and release the brokenness. And so I invite us to enter into a time of reflection and release. We will do that first as the choir leads us, followed by some moments of silence. So let's join together now to pray.
in the name of the one who knows us fully and loves us freely. Amen. In brokenness and blessedness, the heart breaks and heart beats. With each gift of grace and each breath we take, we are awakened and assured. In Jesus the Christ, we are accepted, we are forgiven, we are loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now please stand as you are able and let's sing our grateful response. And now, friends, the peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to turn to one another, pass the peace of Christ to each other, and for those of you with us online, peace of Christ be with you all.
As you are peaceably making your way back to your seats, I uh, would like to invite uh, children of all ages. Uh, Jan Martins is, is in the back doorway, and she would love to lead you down to a special time of story for our children. The first reading comes from Hosea, chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. Hear the word of the Lord. Yahweh said, when Israel was a youth, I loved it dearly, and out of Egypt I called my child. But the more I called them, the further they turned from me, making sacrifices to the Baals and burning incense to carved images. I taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arm. But they didn't acknowledge that I was the one who made them whole. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bonds of caring. I removed the yoke from their necks and stooped to feed them. Now they will return to Egypt and Assyria will rule over them because they refuse to return to me. Swords will flash in their villages, destroying their gates and devouring them because of their plans. My people are determined to turn away from me. Even though they cry out to the heights, they will not be lifted up. Yet, how can I abandon you, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I make you like Adama? How can I treat you like Zeblim? My heart is aching within me. I am burning with compassion. No, I can't do it. I cannot act on my righteous anger. I will not turn around and destroy Ephraim. For I am God, no mere mortal, the Holy One who walks among you.
<laughs> Our second reading today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Listen again to God's word. The eleven made their way to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had summoned them. At the sight of the risen Christ, they fell down in homage. Though some doubted what they were seeing, Jesus came forward and addressed them in these words. All authority has been given me both in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of Abba God and of the only begotten and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to carry out everything I have commanded you. And know that I am with you always, even until the end of the world.
friends, God so loved the world. God so loved the world in Jesus the Christ that the invitation to come not only to this table, but more deeply and fully into that love is for everyone. Because it's a love that not only gives us life, but will go to death and resurrection and beyond to be known, to be experienced, to be shared. And so at this table, we recognize that love that has no limits or boundaries, that is beyond anything that may try to stop it. Anything that may try to contain it, to box it in, to nail it down. The empty cross and the empty tomb remind us of that. Each time that we come to this table, this love is eternal. And this love is universal. So as we come to a time to celebrate communion, let's pause for a few moments to pray. Gracious God, what wondrous love you are and what wondrous love you give to our world, to our communities, to our lives, to each of us. We thank you for this greatest of all gifts. And Jesus, we thank you for being a living embodiment of that love who came not only to live life among us, to give life among us, to give your own life for us, and to live eternally for us and with us. But we thank you that you came as a living reminder, not only that you are one of us, but that we are one with you. And we each, in our own unique, ordinary, imperfect ways, are living lights of the world. As we gather at this table and we recognize the ways that brokenness is transformed into a source of blessedness, we remember all of those who are living in the throes of brokenness, those who are living in war-torn countries, those who are living right here on our streets those who are suffering through losses of relationships and jobs, those who are grieving the losses of loved ones. And we give you thanks for your ever presence and for your empowerment to be your presence, your presence of justice and equality, your presence of love and hope, and peace, and light. God, let there be more light in your world and in our lives that we might all know that we are equally cherished and equally empowered to be your gifts of love. Holy Spirit, we thank you for these ordinary gifts of bread and cup. By your presence, may they become for us an extraordinary means of experiencing that endless, limitless, unconditional love. We pray in Christ's name, amen. So on the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, he was 
celebrating something regular, ordinary, with his friends, Passover. And as was the custom, Jesus took bread. And after he blessed it and gave thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his friends. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, broken for you in love. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of redemption and poured it out, holding nothing back. And he blessed it and gave it to his friends, and he said, take and drink. This cup is the new promise, sealed in my blood, shed for forgiveness. So take and drink, and whenever you do, always remember me. So friends, whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we are proclaiming, we are sharing good news. The death of Jesus brings life. The life of Jesus is available to all. No conditions, no expectations, no restrictions. Simply love, love, love. We invite you to come forward at a time of your choosing down the center aisles to receive uh, the bread and the cup. The bread is gluten-free wafers. The cup is grape juice. So all of us have an opportunity to partake as we choose and then to return by the side aisles. And if you are not able to come forward, just stay right where you are. The elements will come to you so that all of us can join in the celebration. So friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Will the servers please come forward?
And all of God's children say, Amen. Friends, as we're moving closer and closer to summer, there are some exciting opportunities for us to connect. I just want to highlight a couple of those. The first of which are happening this morning following worship. We have a beautiful, special coffee hour set up this morning down in the fellowship hall. And that is in part to say thank you to our choir and to celebrate Choir Sunday. That's happening right down here in this direction, down the stairs uh, in the fellowship hall. We invite you all to join us following worship. Then at 11 a.m., directly below us in the dining hall, we are having a mandala rock painting uh, class that Alice Lewis is leading us in, and it's a wonderful opportunity to express your creativity through painting on beautiful flat rocks. And uh, Alice will show you everything you need to know to bring out the inner artiste within you. So join us at around 11 o'clock or so uh, in the dining hall for that time together. The other thing that I wanted to mention is you may have noticed in our Narthex lobby area as you were walking in a long table with books of poetry by Mary Oliver. Those are gifts for our high school graduates this year. And as is our custom here at Moreland, we invite you, members, friends, neighbors, uh, to sign your name. You can even add a little word of encouragement or congratulations to all eight of our high school graduates. Um, We will be giving them those gifts and celebrating them next Sunday, the 11th, during worship. So, but I invite you uh, this morning, or if you uh, aren't able to and need to join us during the week, we will have those available during office hours uh, here at the church throughout the week. So please sign your name and congratulate our amazing, awesome high school graduates, including Gavin Downs, who... uh, is graduating Cleveland this Tuesday. Is that correct, Gavin? Congratulations. We're very, very proud of you. Yes. And to embarrass him further, Gavin is the valedictorian of his class. So... (laughs) We're just a wee bit proud of you, Gavin. Congratulations. Friends, uh, why do we have the gift of this life together? It is a gift from God, and it is a gift that flows through each of us. It's because of your response to God's love and to the love that is planted within your hearts that you give out through your time, through your presence, through your gifts and talents, through your resources, your treasures. Thank you for all of the ways that you are able to be generous in those ways and more. Your presence here is an incredible offering today. Thank you. But now let's take a few moments to receive our gifts and tithes and offerings. is a word in South Africa, Ubuntu. That means we are all connected in a very real way. When we live Ubuntu, humanity thrives and the world becomes a better place.
There's so much we can do to live and breathe Ubuntu. Speak up for one another. Stand up for each other. and build trust, fill lives with hope. What you put into the world will well up and overflow. As we give thanks for God's incredible and unmistakable gifts in our lives, let's do that by praying the prayer that Jesus taught his first followers to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name, where can you come, where will be done, on earth first is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts. As we give our debtors, and we as not a temptation, but to us the evil, the vice, the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks, Ian. Our hymn of sending is Hallelujah, We Sing Your Praises. The words are on the screen above you.
I invite you to open your hands. And as you've heard the choir lead us this morning, may you know not only that God is love, but that you are love. And that that is the love that will not let us go. That God has given us this love as a gift to give to others. And when we live Ubuntu, we all flourish. So we give thanks on this day to the God who is worthy to be praised. And we give thanks for each and every one of us who have been given that gift of life and love to live to the fullest. So friends, as you go from this place, may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us. May God's grace shine within us. And may God's loving and life-giving presence be with us and within us, among us and around us, behind us and beyond us, this day and every day. And now, friends, I invite you to remain standing for our musical benediction because you're going to want to get back up anyway. have come into the house of the Lord to praise his holy name, to give glory, honor, and adore his son whose life he gave. Let the trumpets sound and the rocks resound, our sinful souls he saved. your voices high and sing to the Lord is worthy to be praised. Shout Hosanna high to God for his everlasting grace. Let the trumpets sound, let the rocks resound, his infant grateful praise.
And now, can I get an amen? amen. Do it again. Amen. Dear, dear, dear choir. <sighs> How your hearts have come together and connected our hearts all together <laughs> in that sacred rhythm and rhyme and beautiful verse that is the love of God in Christ. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not just for today, but for all that has led up to today, all this year. You truly are the heartbeat of our worship life. And we celebrate God and we celebrate you today. And Evan, dancing. When you walked into an interview room about five years ago, almost five years ago, can you believe it? And you sat down, actually in a suit that looks similar to this. He was dressed for, for the occasion. And we sat down and there was a circle of us and you immediately locked in with me. Well, we talked first for like a half an hour. But then, with the rest of the group, from the start, you opened your heart, your mind, your creativity, your spirit to our circle of community. And what you have brought to our circle of community is a gift that's beyond anything I can blabber about. It's best to sing it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We love you, Evan. And Tracy. Tracy. You may not know this, but Tracy was just the guest accompanist that did Evan's audition with the choir. And he and Evan had known each other from prior, some prior experiences. And after they both left and we talked to the choir, they said two things. One, how soon can we hire Evan? And number two was, can we hire Tracy too? <laughs> and sure enough, we needed a pianist, accompanist, organist, and here you are, and Tracy, what an incredible gift you are. <laughs> Endless creativity and flexibility to move through times of pandemic, to always highlight the beloveds who have passed on, that you weave them into our spaces here together, the way you accompany the choir, the way you accompany us as we sing together. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts, both of you. What an incredible gift you are to our whole community. And friends, what a gift you all are. So live like it. Go into this week energized, encouraged, empowered to be the vessels of God's love that you are. All of God's children say, Amen. We'll see you at coffee hour and rock painting.